In this video I'm going to be talking about the Korg AX1500G which is a multi-purpose pedal, a fax pedal and the connections are pretty basic that's the input from your violin or guitar and this is the output you want the one there that's that's labelled left mono that's the output and that goes over out to your um, amplifier or to your mixing desk whichever you're using 9 volt DC with a negative tip on the power supply that's all that's required there This is a very versatile pedal, in fact I find it's one of the easiest Korg pedals to program. And this, this is the sort of thing that you would perhaps create on something like Excel or in this instance I'm using OpenOffice. But you create basically patches, what are known as patches. Those affect the sound of the violin. So it goes through the pedal and it's affected by whatever you've programmed on your particular patch. So I'm going to go through each of the settings on this pedal and try my best to explain what they do and then give you some idea what's appropriate for creating a patch that's suitable for an electric violin be it either a passive one or a powered one. This is a, a patch which I've created. I found this one particularly good. Um, I used this one at a gig on Saturday evening with my um, acoustic violin uh, with a Fishman pickup and it seemed to work very well. Unfortunately, the illumination on the um, indicator on my pedal is not so bright these days. I've had this pedal for well over, well, for many, many years. Now, the drive amp has lots of different settings here. But basically, if you want a clean sound, you really don't want to be using these fuzz settings or overdrive or metal distortion. That's no good. Unless, of course, you're playing in a rock band. But if you aren't, if you're playing something like Kaylee or something where you want a nice clean sound, you really just want the classic compression setting. Don't go for the acoustic, because actually what that is, is for guitarists, electric guitar players, who want to emulate an acoustic um, sound of... Um, an electroacoustic guitar, which is sort of almost buzzy sort of sounding. Okay, so now I'll press the acoustic emulator and you can hear. It does sound like um, an, an acoustic uh, an electroacoustic guitar with a piezo type of pickup. That's not really of any use for us on the violin. The one we want is classic compression. And strangely enough, we're not going to um, do much with that because this has got a certain amount of overdrive built into it, but we don't want that. And I can show you that over here on this display. It usually starts off around about four when you switch the the dial to classic compression. You usually find that the drive, the overdrive, is around about the setting of four. But we don't really want that because that's going to introduce some distortion. So you want to go to set that to off. The next thing is the level, which is here. Well, we do want that. So I'm going to turn that level full, 
to 10.0 because that's fairly clean that's a clean level sound um, and it's it, it gives us a good amount of volume coming out of the pedal then we've simply got treble middle and bass so you you can alter those according to your preference you may wish to um, with the treble you may wish just to take it down slightly perhaps the the midway setting by the way is perfectly clean setting so five is the unaffected signal so what that means is if you play your violin if you have that set to five the sound of the violin won't be altered in any way if you have it set to um, six then the treble will be slightly higher on the treble control there the treble will be slightly higher if you have it set to four the treble will, will be reduced slightly so five is the midway setting so you might want to just start off by having each of those tone control set to five because you can always come back to them and alter them at a later stage so there we are I've put the bass to five the middle to five and the, tre the treble to five if you increase the bass too much incidentally if you put a load of bass on because you like that sort of bottom end that's good but it will increase the amount of thump by that I mean when you when the bow, the fiddle bow, changes direction, you get a sort of thumping sound. Well, if you increase the amount of um, bass, whoops, I'm increasing the middle there. If you increase the amount of bass, that thump will become more pronounced. So that's worth knowing about. So I've left it set to five for the time being. So that's the drive amp. Next thing, the cabinet. Okay, if you want, you can leave cabinet off completely. It's not not necessary at all for a good sound cabinet. Personally, I quite like the sound of a cabinet because uh, I'm used to playing through amplifiers. And something like a classic 4x12, well, that's a very, very big cabinet. That's something like a big Marshall. Um, but a tweed... Well, that's, that's, that's a very clean sounding amplifier. It's best just to tinker around with these and see what you prefer. But each of these will give you the opportunity to alter. The, there are three settings you can alter. Um, the first one is the air, which I think is the distance of the microphone from the amp, um, from, the, from the loudspeaker and the amplifier. It might actually be the size of the cabinet. Not quite sure on that one. But it's worth fiddling around to see what, you, you, what sound you prefer. And then, of course, the level. You can bring the level up. If you go too high, it can get distorted. So maybe 9, 8 or 9, something like that. And the presence, that is um, almost like a tone control. If you increase that, it gets more toppy. So I usually keep that around about midway or maybe just a smidgen over halfway. So that's, that, that gives you a sound that fairly representative of playing through a small amplifier. If you want to go to a really small amp, I guess you could go to uh, one of the, um, the one, one inch, one by eight inch tweed or the one by 12 tweed, which if you know anything about guitar amps, the tweed amps are a very clean sort of sounding amplifier. It um, doesn't affect the sound of a guitar too much. So um, tweed, a tweed amp um, is possibly a good one to go for. Um, <clears throat> I like the AC, the one, the um, the AC fifteen as well. That's a nice amplifier with a um, single twelve inch speaker speaker built into it um, it's like a combi amp that one by combi I mean the amplifier sits on top of the speaker okay so that's the cabinet section so you can decide whether you want that on or off and then modulation now that's an interesting one I've discovered that by using a small amount of chorus 
um, you can actually create an effect that reduces the sound of the piezo slightly. So um, when you press modulation, you're given um, three more controls down here that you can alter. Things like the speed, the depth, and also, I'll just try and show you that by getting the camera in the right place. And the amount of mix, and the amount of, um, uh, or the mix of the chorus that you're going to use. So, I'm going to show you some settings that I've chose, but obviously you can type those in yourself and try them out. And then create your own. <clears throat> the pedal is the next section. The most useful thing here, I find, is the, uh, the volume. And you can, you can set the volume very simply by twisting the, the end knob there and that will take the level. If you set the volume to zero, when you alter the position of the pedal, it will go from zero to ten. That's very handy if you're on stage and you want to alter the volume of the violin at the same time. But that's what that volume control does on the pedal. The other ones, the other effects are great. The Wah Wah, the Traveller, they're interesting to try out anyway. Um, the Ring Mod, worth trying those things out to see what they actually do. But really at the end of the day, the volume is about the only one I use. I have used the Wah Wah from time to time. This one here, you can control it with your foot, you see. So you can get a bit of a Jimi Hendrix kind of sound if that takes your fancy. And then moving on down to the end, we've got the ambience. Now, there's all sorts of settings here, wonderful though they are. And they give you lots of opportunity to set the speed of the, um, the delay time. There you are, delay time. Now, that, I believe, is one second when it shows 100. It's about one second. And then it kind of goes up. So really, if you if you go above one second, it, it does it does start to um, notice. Um, generally, I try and keep the amount of um, delay down. I like the setting echo plate, and I also like the setting um, echo hall because it gives you the option of adding delay and reverb together. Whereas the other settings don't. They only give you the option of adding uh, reverb. But those last two give you that option of adding both delay and reverb. So, um, of course, these other settings are just that one there. That echo setting is just delay. This echo one is just delay, I believe. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, just delay. Um, stereo delay is just delay. Whereas these ones down here, they give you the opportunity of adding a certain amount of reverb. See, that's 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 delay there. But the end control, it's difficult to show you this, but the end control gives you a certain amount of reverb as well. So that's really handy, be able to get um, a small amount of reverb and a reasonable amount of delay. It really does clean the signal up. <clears throat> So, um, ambience, um, it's one of those things you've got to try out for yourself to see what you want. But you can go overboard and have too much um, delay and reverb, so it might be best to be slightly conservative with that. Anyway, okay, I've plugged the um, violin directly into the Korg effects pedal. There is no DI box. This is this cable goes directly into the input on the back of the um, effects unit. And then I'm taking a, that processed sound out to um, a small mixer which feeds directly into my computer so you can hear exactly what the sound is like without any effects added to it.
you can probably hear from that completely clean unaltered sound going straight through the pedal that this pedal in a way is acting as a DI box it certainly doesn't seem to be um, reducing the bass frequencies it seems to be lifting them in some way rather similar to a purpose-built DI box like this um, acoustic um, box acoustic modeling box from Behringer this is a very low cost item but basically this Korg pedal seems to be to do to do the same thing without any problem at all so um, when I go out and play on a gig I don't bother taking anything out I just take this and plug directly into the back and then the output goes straight into the mixing desk on the main stage so it works well <laughs> This is a patch, what is known as a patch, which is like a setting of the sounds. So all of the settings I've made in there to do with volume, tone, the amount of compression and perhaps chorus and delay or reverb is built into one sound which is called a patch. The reason it's called a patch is because in the old days synthesizers used to actually have cables which were used to plug into various parts of of the synthesizer to create um, a new sound and, and the, these cables were called patch cables and, and the name has just st stayed with all this kind of equipment that you program. Let me talk you through how I created that sound or that patch on this effect pedal. This is the um, listing of the different settings I chose on the uh, pedal which I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them very clearly but you can probably see I've got them listed here on, um, on a spreadsheet program. So I can easily call up that patch and just see exactly what settings I've used. Now I can actually easily um, find out the settings I've programmed using the pedal as well. It's, it's very straightforward and I'll deal with that and show you how I do that later. But initially you can see I've, I've chosen a number of different sections of this pedal to interact with the sound. So that's what I'm going to show you now, is what that looks like on the pedal. Anyway, these are some of the settings I've chosen. And you can see I've got them displayed there. And um, each of those can be dialed in to the pedal. Um, let me just show you how you can dial those in. So let's say I want to... Um, dial that delay in there. Standard delay. Oh, I'm sorry, stereo delay. Let me show you, show you how I would dial that in. The first setting there, the, the speed is 53. So let's have a look. There's the pedal. First thing you do would be to, let's say it's off for the time being, is switch the knob here round to stereo delay. Okay, now you can see that knob is flashing. Now all these lights have come on but if you go over here to this section here and press this button on the right just below the word user what it will do it will start to scroll through each of the settings on that particular um, in this particular patch so going back to the beginning let's say 
I want to program that particular patch there. So the search setting is 53. So let's go back here. 53. Now that's a time setting. So I go to 53. There you go, 53. Then I press the next button, which is here. Boom. <coughs> And the next section is feedback, which is actually this knob here. It's the second one along. And feedback on there is three. So I come across here to the second knob and I press adjust that down to 3.0, like so. The next setting is four and there's this third light in the row if you can see that is the one I'm going to choose and I'm going to set the tone to four okay <clears throat> then finally the last setting on knob five is four so if you uh, go down here and adjust the mix, which is on knob 4, there you go, it's on 4 now. So that is that ambience programmed in. And if you want, now you can press right, like so, press it twice, and it stores it. And if you want to give it another name, you just press rename there and then you scroll through with the little wheel there just and it scrolls through the alphabet for you. There you go. And when you want to go to the next letter, you just press this right hand button and you go to the next letter. So that's how you actually enter these individual parameters that you see on that sheet there. The final one there, the sensitivity, the noise reduction sensitivity and pedal volume, you get to those by pressing this bit here where it says noise reduction and program level. There, they are, that's patch level or program level and you can increase that just by um, twiddling one of these knobs down here. Um, let's see which one it is. Oh, that's sensitivity. The one on the left is sensitivity and the one on the right is level. So that's how you get those up to the right setting. I, um, I don't usually go too much further on the noise reduction sensitivity than five because it, what it does do is it starts to cut out the sound of the violin. It redu removes some of the attack so I usually keep it on five. And then once again, you'd press right to save that. So that's the settings. And that's how you program this particular pedal. Um, I hope that's been of some use. Um, <clears throat> I will add on this video these individual um, programs, patches that I've uh, created and you can play around with those by all means and, and try typing them into your own pedal and seeing how you get on. Hopefully this will give you a starting point anyway with this pedal. Thank you very much for watching. Have fun and see you all again soon. Bye bye now. This is a demonstration of patch 105.